cloud. Okay. And now let's see if I can get the YouTube streaming going. And cool. Okay, so now hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, if, if you cannot see my slides, please shout. Um, so, hey, welcome to fall 2020. Um, this is very different from previous falls for me, certainly. Um, hopefully you all are staying safe. This is a class on how, um, how humans can interact with machine learners. So thinking about, we are going to have lots of AI agents, how do we want to interact with them? How should we interact with them? And what does it mean or what's different when those agents are learning instead of just, um, instead of being static? So uh, many, some students feel more comfortable calling me Professor Taylor. I, I really would prefer to go by Matt. Uh, I, I find that if students uh, address me as Matt, then they're more likely to uh, call me out when I say something dumb or uh, to challenge me. And I think that's important because I, as I'll talk about, I've been doing interactive machine learning for a number of years and I'm very excited about it, but I am by no means the, the um, that, let's see, the, uh, the, I don't want to say I'm not an expert. I am an expert, but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm always right. So I do expect people to have contradictory opinions. I do expect people to, to argue with me and with others in the class. If it's just me talking at you, like right now, it's going to be boring. So instead, I'm hoping that we can have this be an interactive, more interactive class because, oh, it's right there in the title. Look at that. Okay. Um, so... If you would like to ask questions or comments, you should at any point feel free to um, unmute yourself and just interrupt. Uh, it, I was thinking of asking people to raise hands, but because there are multiple people in the class, I can't always see everyone. And there's a better chance, if, I guess there's a raised hand button in Zoom, but I'm more likely to miss it. Um, so if you if you have any questions or comments, do just unmute yourself. Um, also, I'm trying to use Discord this semester. So in Discord, we're able to have uh, discussions and comments. So there is now a specific channel called Questions and Comments about Max Lectures. So if you would like to, um, if you don't want to unmute yourself and talk, you are absolutely welcome to um, use the uh, use that chat. Um, this is also true. So, if because we are recording, if you don't want um, to be on the recording, then you know keep your camera off. You can ask questions through the uh, through the Discord, and you don't need to be on the web. But because I'm teaching this class for the first time. Um, and everything's online. I figured it try. It made sense to try to make this all available to other people. Um, so if if you are registered for the class, you're in this Zoom meeting, and you're able to interact in real time. If you are not registered for the class, then you can still get this material by uh, looking at the stuff on YouTube and the uh, website. But you won't have quite the same experience as those of us in in the Zoom meeting. Okay, so where does that leave? Well, okay, why don't, why don't we talk a little bit about what this class is supposed to be about? The, the hope is that we, in either as individuals or groups, get a bunch of cool pilot studies done. So a pilot study is, so is, is a way of deciding, am, am I going to take this idea I have and test this hypothesis with a larger group? So for instance, you could come up with a hypothesis that um, if an AI is explainable, 
then people are able to, to uh, better give it data so that it can learn. It can, people can give higher quality data. So a concrete example of that is, let's say you are trying to teach a machine learner how to look at pictures and tell you whether it's a cow, a dog, or something else. We could hypothesize that if the machine learner is explainable, then you should be able to look at it. A person should be able to look at it and realize, oh man, that's why it's not understanding cows. Let me give it a few examples of cows that are not on grass, but cows that are on the road. So then the machine learner understands that cows don't have to be on grass. So that's one example of a hypothesis we could test. But the hope is that over the first, first you know, third of the class, we'll do a broad outline, broad background of what interactive machine learning is and does and can be used for. And then we'll start to, in, again, in groups or as individuals, we'll go and come up with some kind of hypothesis that you can use, use the tools that we learn in this class to then go evaluate. If it turns out that you, act, you came up with a cool idea and it seems like it works, then totally, let's go for a conference paper. Graduate students is all about getting publications. But if it doesn't work, let me put it this way, regardless of if, it were, if your hypothesis is true or not, you can still get a great grade in this class. It's about going through the process and following the process, coming up with a hypothesis and testing it. It's not whether your, your pilot study happens to work out or not. Because if you're in science, you spend a lot of time making bad decisions and uh, coming up, doing experiments that were just a waste of time. Because that's the, that's the beauty of science. Matt, can I interrupt for a second? Please. Uh, the YouTube live stream is uh, not yet live and there's a number of people waiting. Oh, let's see. So I tried to do, thank you for interrupting with that. Um, let me try stopping the live stream and starting it again. Do, do, do. Stream on custom streaming service, preparing to stream. Oh, and it looks like there's a couple of things in the chat window. While I'm stopped, let me look at that. Sorry for the delay. I freak Figured this uh, first day would not go perfectly smoothly. Uh, so far, no major problems. Um, yeah. It, uh, Zoom thinks it's uh, supposed to be streaming, but YouTube does not. So I'm afraid I don't, uh, let's see. Um, it would be nice if I could give a comment at least to the people on YouTube. Nope, can't figure out how to do it. Okay, so I'll put, I'll put it in the Discord for you, Matt. Thank you, Nick. So, okay, so where does that leave us? Okay, so let's talk a bit more about what we're actually going to be doing. So, thinking about what does human AI interaction look like? So, we've spent, humans have spent a lot of time thinking about how human human interaction works. How do you build effective teams? How do you get people to work together well and share knowledge effectively? That's very different from how a human and an AI are going to interact. Similarly, machine learning people spend a lot of time thinking about a lot of time thinking about how one agent can transfer knowledge or teach another agent or um, have multiple agents work together. But that's usually thinking about things at a very low level that humans won't be able to understand. So one of the, the theses of this class is that this human and AI interaction really will be different than human human or machine machine. And it's really its own thing. And the particular thing we're thinking about is what happens when that AI can learn. So if that AI can learn what the human wants to do or how to treat a particular human or how to model a human, all of that is fair game and should be able to enhance the relationship between this, this human and the machine learner. So we can think about what are, what are the different goals that we could have and how could you interact? So I gave the earlier example about someone um, teaching a machine to label cows or dogs or not cows. So that's a very kind of abstract interaction, just trying to provide those labels so that a learner can do this 
a very random task. But you could also think of something a little more interactive. So if I had a robot, I might want to teach it to clean up the cat's litter box. And I want it and, and you know, I can't really program, so I'm gonna teach it how to do this. And robot, please don't do this after 10 p.m. because you're just gonna wake me up and it's gonna really annoy me. So trying to learn those preferences from a person. So, okay, you could, you could have the machine learner do things for you, but you could also think of teaming. So thinking about uh, a good example, well, a example that's popular right now is in the, the US has developed a um, autonomous, or is developing an autonomous wingman. So having a fighter pilot that can work alongside an AI plane and thinking about how the human who has better reasoning abilities and high, higher um, inte intelligence and able to think about the, the mission goals and all of this, how the human can do that kind of stuff, while at the same time, the AI can make very quick decisions. It can make very accurate types of uh, decisions or uh, take very accurate actions that the human may be incapable of. So those two working together, the human and the machine working together can accomplish things that neither could do on their own. We'll also be talking a bit at the beginning of the class about how we do human subject studies. So we'll be um, uh, talking to a few different people about how, if you bring humans into the mix, how does that make things different? So if I am if I'm in my normal machine learning setting, you know I I'm just in my basement and my computer is interacting with data, but now if we have humans and we are interacting with humans, how does that change things? How does that change the scientific method? But also how does that change uh, what we could possibly do and how we could test that stuff? Uh, if you haven't heard of it before, crowdsourcing is a pretty cool technique uh, that's been develop developing over time where one of the popular platforms is Amazon's Mechanical Turk. So a bit of, a bit of AI history. Um, if you haven't heard of the Mechanical Turk, it was this uh, robot back around in the 1700s, I think, that played chess. So this cool chess playing robot and there's um, a, a Turk uh, that would, the, the robot looked like uh, someone from Turkey. And of course, what it turned out is there was, there was not a, ro a robot playing chess in the 1700s. It was a very small man that was inside the box that was manipulating the, the chess pieces. So it, you, people thought it was a computer or a robot, but it was actually a human. So Amazon's Mechanical Turk is letting humans go and do uh, tasks that we think would take human computation. So one of the ways we'll be, we can use crowdsourcing in this class is to go and get a bunch of data if we want. Um, more likely, we'll think about uh, just how we could use crowdsourcing to do cool and different things. So for instance, a friend of mine, Walter Lisecki, had this program called Legion where you could be writing something in Word and a bunch of people on the crowd could go and edit it for you in real time. So they could do things like correcting spelling, but also go and like look up URLs for you or references or go and make your grammar better or go and add a concrete example. So this is a way of multiple people working together to improve one piece of writing and you need an AI to be able to, to uh, successfully be an intermediary there. And then in the kinds of uh, projects that we do as a class, they'll probably be more about thinking about how a human and a machine learning agent can support or interact with each other. But like I mentioned, we may be able to get up to something cool like or more complex like teaming. We're thinking about how people or a person and agents can work together to accomplish something that they can't, neither could do on their own. Okay, so I'd like, I, I wanna keep the focus on doing this pilot study because I think it gives us something concrete with a hard deadline and uh, we can look at you know, trying to make a, a paper that could be submitted to a conference so you get that kind of structure. 
but that's not the only outcome. So if, again, if your, if your project fails or if your hypothesis is, has showed faults, that's not that big a deal because you'll be getting all these other benefits. So we will be going through a bunch of um, machine learning stuff. The goal of this class is to not teach um, new machine learning things. It is more to tell you about machine learning techniques that exist and how we can enhance those to interact with humans. But chances are, by taking this class, you'll learn a bunch of new stuff about machine learning. You also get some experience reading research papers and presenting in critiquing stuff. So not, not all nerds uh, recognize that a big part of your job once you get out of grad school is going to be communication. So I always I try to emphasize to my students that you need to learn how to present and communicate with other people. Computer scientists, especially machine learning people have a tendon. There are some cases where machine learning people are really good at talking with other machine learning people, but not necessarily with others. And I know there's a bunch of people in this class from different backgrounds. So, so people from rehabil rehabilitation medicine and electrical engineering. And the fact that we have that diversity is perfect. Not only because this class really is an interdisciplinary topic in itself, but also so that we can get the chance to practice talking to people across disciplines. Because that really is, I think, a critical skill. And of course, we'll get some experience writing and presenting uh, research. So at the end, you'll need to present your project as well as write something up. Okay, so like I was saying before we started recording, um, this is a new class. I have not taught it before. So I, I've decided to put it online just because it seemed like the right thing to do because we're in a pandemic and why not make this uh, material available. But because it's the first time I'm teaching this class, there'll be some bumps. Um, there'll probably be some technology bumps. So you probably, you might've noticed that E-Class is down today. Surprise. Um, also, I sent out an email to all of you who are registered. And in the email, I included the wrong link to the live stream. And if you clicked on that link, you were treated to 30 seconds of me staring at the screen being very confused. So that, that, was, that was awesome. It's, it's always nice to, to be like, yep, I have a PhD. I still make dumb, dumb computer science mistakes. Um, but there'll also be, so there'll probably be technical problems, but that's true of everywhere this fall. Um, but there'll also probably be some uh, content that will be more refined the second and third time I teach that. But that's always true. So what I'm going to really ask you, you all is to give me feedback as we go. So I'll be, I'll be poking you regularly to say, hey, how am I doing? What are you enjoying? What would you like more of? What would you like less of? What topics would be more interesting to you? But please do be proactive. If you think I am doing something that could be better, or if you have suggestions or something you think is particularly cool, please do let me know. And, and if, you're, uh, if you're really shy, you can make it an anonymous email. But just the, the more feedback you can give me, interaction, huh? Uh, the more feedback you can give me, hopefully, the more fun this will be for all of us. Okay, so now is a great time for me to take a breath and stop uh, talking at you and see if there are questions or comments before I dive into the, uh, the syllabus. All right. Uh, then let me go to the syllabus because this is always the, the most exciting part of anybody's first day, uh, first class. Okay, so now hopefully um, you can see the syllabus on my screen. If you can't, please yell. Um, we do have a course email. So that will be monitored by Nick Hogger and myself, uh, but you're also welcome to email me directly. What I'm trying to do this year is come to class half an hour early and stay at least half an hour late. Instead of having, you know, 
2 to 3 p.m. on Thursdays. I'm just going to show up before and after the class. So if people have questions or want to talk about things or just hang out, perfect. If you would like to um, uh, schedule a time with me, we also have a scheduler that you can use to pick a time to meet with just me or meet with a group of people. That's totally cool too. And when we're doing, when we're hanging out before and after class, we can also join breakout rooms. So if you want to ask me something and you'd prefer not to have other people listen in, that's totally cool too. So I kind of covered this course description already. Many of you, I think, have seen the video I put up a few weeks ago on the course webpage. It was kind of a 10 minute preview trying to say why you should register for this class. So I don't really want to repeat all that information. But for those of you who haven't seen it, basically, you just, you just need to know that the course is awesome and you're definitely in the right place. Um, let's see, the prerequisite. So I have asked that people have one prior machine learning course. Since then, a number of people have, have written to me and been like, well, I took this to Coursera class, or I did these online tutorials things, or I did this project on my own. And I think in, in almost every, I think in every case, I ended up saying, yeah, you should take the class. So if you are someone that has a strong machine learning background, you will be able to really dive into the details of some of the machine learning methods. You can make algorithmic improvements. You can do some optimization. All of this is on the table. If you are someone who has less machine learning background, then we'll be more relying, you would be more relying on existing tools and uh, thinking about how do I download tools and code and make minor more minor modifications so that I can address these cool human ML interaction questions. So I think, I think there's a pretty broad range of backgrounds that people can have and can benefit from taking this class. But if you have uh, concerns about that, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about it at, at, after class, one-on-one uh, -on -one with you or over email, any of that. If you have any worries about, will this class be right for me? I'm happy to chat about that. Um, I already talked about objectives. Oh, good, here's the schedule. Okay, so I've tried to come up with a rough schedule where we begin by just talking about human and ML interaction, then looking at supervised learning versus reinforcement learning. So for instance, in supervised learning, thinking about um, how we could have a, a look at EEG signals from a human so a human can think about some activity and trying to get the machine to look at EEG signals and figure out what activity the human is, is thinking about and then maybe doing something based on that. So that would be an example of supervised learning. Whereas reinforcement learning is going to be more about decision tasks. So if I am playing, a, if a, a robot or an agent is playing a video game, how could the human help the, the agent learn? Or how could the human teach a robot dog to do the right things that the human wants them to do? Then we'll go on to talking a little about user modeling. So it seems like the better the machine learning knows what the human is thinking, the better off people, better off the system will be. And likewise with explainability, the better off the human understands what the machine learning agent is doing, the better off the system will be. And then we'll go, go into teaming. And then I've set aside three weeks where we're going to set the agenda based on what you all find interesting. So you'll notice that about halfway through the class, you will have had to nail down a hypothesis and pilot study. And at that point, you'll probably have a pretty good idea of what, what particular small question you want to address. And there'll likely be some existing uh, material and in the literature that we can read as a class that will benefit multiple people. So I really do, I'm hoping that the last part of the class will be guided by us and what we find most interesting at the time. So during the semester, uh, this isn't quite up to date, um, there's gonna be a bunch of guest speakers. So on Thursday, my friend Corey is going to be joining us. So Corey graduated with a PhD in computer science last year. He's now at DeepMind and he does some awesome um, human in the loop stuff. So he's gonna talk to us about human in the loop AI at a high level. 
later in the semester, he's going to, he, he does this, um, uh, he and a, couple, a friend do this improv show where he and his friend and a robot improvise live on stage. So we'll, we'll be able to watch, uh, I think it's in November, that maybe late October is their performance. So we as a class can watch that because it's all remote. Um, but then Corey can come back to us and talk about some of the technology that he uses to, to do this natural language processing and, and uh, improv live. So that should be pretty fun. Um, Carrie is an expert in, is a pr professor here and is an expert in intelligent tutoring systems, works with humans a lot. Avi is a friend of mine uh, who does work on explainability and reinforcement learning. Um, they, oh, I should, I guess it doesn't matter, but I'll mention that, um, let's see, Carrie and Avi and Patrick are all professors. Corey's at DeepMind, Nathan is at a different company, but Nathan does a lot of stuff with teaming. So thinking about human in the loop versus human on the loop and what that means and how AIs need to interact with humans. And then Patrick, if you don't, if you don't know him already, he's awesome. And he does work on, um, well, humans and uh, prosthetic arms working together. So thinking about now, if you lose, if you lose an arm, now you could have a static hook or you could have an agent and maybe that agent is learning. So now you've got part of your body that you are learning to team with. So that, that presents a lot of interesting challenges and it's some very cool research. Okay, so we're gonna, like I mentioned, we're gonna be using a bunch of technology. Um, so again, this is my first semester at U of A. So this just seems weird to me that you are not supposed to use your U of A email address on systems outside of U of A, but apparently that's the rule. Um, so anyway, when you're signing up for stuff like Zoom or Discord, or I'll show you a poll anywhere in a few slides, um, please don't use your U of A address, use a Gmail address, or you can use this anonymous ID from E-Class. Oh wait, E-Class is down. Well, maybe when it's up, you'll be able to do this. So. Then um, on eClass, there's a way that you can match your Discord ID to your U of A email. So that way I can, if I need to, I can make the matching between these different systems and you. So one, one of the easy things is you'll see in a few minutes that one of, the, one of the large components of the course is course participation. So things like if you're active on Discord, if you're interacting with polls on polls every, any, anywhere, everywhere, it's an easy way for me to give you lots of points. Cause I can just, I can go and say, okay, these, these people were all, all talking and interacting and it's very easy to give them full marks. So that, that makes my life a little bit easier. Uh, if, if you are taking this class for credit, I'd, I'd like you to be able to be here live. I think that's more because I would like more interaction. Having it live is better. I completely understand that that can't always happen you will have technology problems, you will have internet problems, you will have a doctor's appointment. That's totally fine. Just let me know if you can. If you're not planning on making a class, just let me know. Um, also, you can always watch the recording after the class. One of the things that I like about the recording also is you can get automatic transcripts. So if you're hard of hearing, that helps. So it's an accessibility thing. Also, if I'm talking too fast, and you have trouble understanding, then you can always go back and watch the video because I got excited and just sped up and talked way too fast. Um, or if I say something that doesn't really make sense, you can always go back and see what I said and see if it makes sense the second time around. And then when it doesn't, then you should bring it up and tell me that I wasn't making sense. Uh, oh, so thank you for those of you who have your cameras on. It's if you've ever taught online before, it's kind of weird talking to a blank screen. Um, but I, I, I know many people do not like having their cameras on. And if you don't want your camera on, that's okay. I, I prefer it if you had your camera on, but if you don't want to, I completely understand. Um, you can see that I, I like having my camera and doing cool virtual backgrounds. Uh, oh, and thank you everyone for staying muted when you are not talking. 
because most of us have some kind of background noise going on. And if five people are unmuted and we start hearing five sets of dogs, it gets a little bit harder to hear what's going on. Uh, oh, everything's free. Um, I, I try to teach most courses uh, so that you don't have to have a, a textbook. Textbooks are stupidly expensive, um, especially for undergrads. But there are some um, extra online learning services. This is just boilerplate um, that I cut and paste from what I'm supposed to have in my syllabus. There is also an academic success center. No idea what they do, but uh, that's something I'm supposed to have in my syllabus, so you're welcome. Um, there is a writing center, which I've heard good things about. And here's, here's a recent note from the chair of computer science that I, I, I decided I wanted to put into the syllabus. This is not a normal fall. This is, um, I certainly have had a much higher level of stress over the past months than I normally do. And depending on where you are, things are more or less difficult. I just want to reiterate that there are a bunch of services at the university, but also outside the university that you can um, avail yourself to that are either free or very low cost. So if you think you might benefit from talking to someone, depression, anxiety, school performance, any of that, I do just want you to know those, those resources are out there. Um, if the, I do not know all the best resources at U of A yet, but if there's ever something that you're having trouble finding, please just let me know and I'll find out the right person to ask. So I, I'm, I don't know what's available at U of A, but I'm happy to try to find out. Okay, down to grades. So uh, I, I don't like grading. Grading is awful and it's stressful for the students and the professors, um, but this will be, this should not be a stressful grades class. Um, the, the biggest thing is class participation. So answering polls, asking questions, uh, doing uh, response, giving a presentation, that kind of stuff. All of that counts. Um, I am hoping that everyone gets this 20% this, uh, this easily. I am going to ask people to, towards the end probably, pr briefly present a paper. So thinking like, you're going to have to read a few papers for your project, pick one and give a 15 minute presentation. Should, it should be pretty low key. Um, it'll be a way of you um, helping the class learn about a, a, a wide, wider range of things than what we covered at the beginning of the semester. There'll also be a couple of exercises. Well, probably three or four exercises. So something like, hey, check out this cool website and teach this supervised machine learner. And then once you've done it, uh, fill out this paragraph uh, questionnaire in eClass just to tell me you've done it. So this will, there'll be three or four exercises. You just need to do two of them. And this is gonna be a, did you do it or not? So this is easy points. Um, you have to draft a hypothesis and pilot study where I can give you feedback. It's not gonna be perfect. Even after I give you feedback, it's not gonna be perfect. But as long as we go and put in a good effort to, to try to incorporate the stuff we've been talking about, learning about in class, I'm not worried about that. Then you've got to finalize it, say, yes, here's what I'm actually doing. So again, that's, that shouldn't be too hard. The only things that could be stressful are the report and the presentation. So the, the size or expectations for the report, we'll talk more about that as we get further along. It'll depend on the number of people in, the, in, in your group in the background. But as I believe as long as you do not wait to the last minute, this report and this presentation should not be that difficult or stressful. If you are, uh, if you get stage fright and really don't like presenting, then the, pr the presentation might be a little hard. Um, we can also talk about recording stuff so that if you, if you don't want to present live, you can always do a video with your team. And that way um, it, it may be a little less stressful. So as long as you don't, let me jump back to the calendar. As long as you kind of follow, follow when these things are due, when, when, when you get the uh, pilot study in, when you get the report in, all of that, as long as you don't procrastinate, you should be fine. And I know some of you will. Um, also, 
said uh, your graduate students, many of you may have uh, conferences that you need to go to and you need to miss a week of classes. That's fine. Again, just let me know in advance and we'll figure something out. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, oh, so these the for the work that has a deadline, um, if you are late, it's 10% off per day. So if something bad happens, if there's a medical emergency, please let me know. Otherwise, just try to hand, do hand your stuff in on time or know that there's, there's a penalty because it is, I won't get into grading, but grading is so much easier if you have everything in front of you at once and don't get a stream of things coming in late. It just, it makes, it makes my life a lot easier. Uh, please don't blow off the final presentation. Uh, that would be bad. Um, then there's the normal missed assignments with the religious belief. Um, there is no final examination, so you're not going to defer it. But if, so uh, this goes back to what I was saying before. If something bad comes up, just let me know. If you cannot uh, make an assignment or, or, or the presentation final or the report, just, just let me know and we'll figure something out. Oops. Uh, okay, and I think the rest is boilerplate. So you, if you're if you're watching this, you should have the right resources for remote learning. There are things you can do to get access to other resources. Um, please don't cheat. In this class, I think it would be pretty difficult to cheat. Um, I guess if you went and found somebody else's interactive machine learning work on the web and tried to present it as your own. Uh, but since there aren't tests or quizzes, we don't have that concern. So as long as you are not plagiarizing, I, I, you should be good to go. But always, if you have any questions about, is, is it okay if I do this, just shoot me a message. Or you can even post anonymously and I can um, answer it in Discord. So if you have a question, you can keep it completely anonymous. Um, something about collaboration and accessibility related accommodations. Oh, this is one. So for those of you who don't know about Discord, it's, it's a Slack alternative that's really popular in the gaming and streaming community. So it's, it's, I think it's a pretty cool resource. Um, there is conduct on some discords, which would not be appropriate in an academic context. So please do remember when you're on Discord to, that we're treating each other collegially and it's not just a gamer hangout. Um, I, don't, I don't anticipate having any trouble there. One potential problem is since I want this course to be open, there will be people who are not registered for the class on Discord. So if, if, there are any, ever, if you ever see any uh, disrespectful interactions or if you see anything questionable, please do bring it to our attention. Um, Hogger, Nick, and I will be moderating the Discord and are happy to, to make sure that things um, work. And if things are not working for some reason, please let us know and we'll find a solution. Uh, oh, I should also mention the, um, I'm using a CC by 4.0 license. So this is a Creative Commons. It means that anyone can use my material for anything, including for profit. So if one of you wanted to take all of my slides, turn it into a book and sell it, as long as you gave me uh, credit, then that would be completely legal. So feel free to use these slides, this, all of this material, you can use it for anything you want to. Uh, great, and that's it. So I will pause here and ask if there are questions about anything we've talked about so far. Also, if, something, if someone who is on Discord wanted to drop a comment into questions and comments about Matt's lectures, I'd appreciate it so that I, I know that that's working. Because right now I don't see anything and I'm not sure if that's because people are talking other way. Oh, hey, someone just wrote, hey. Okay, I feel better. Um, okay. Is there go oh, good, good point. Um, so, 
So the reading list right now on the course website, which I can totally pull up here, um, there is a kind of long uh, reading list. So this is me throwing together things that I think might be useful. There will be reading in the class. It, it won't be outrageous. Um, there will be some assigned reading. So please read this article by this date and write up a few sentences in E-class to show that you, you read it. But there'll, there'll also be some places where please read one of these three things so that, um, that you can tailor the, the course reading to what you think is most interesting. This will be particularly true for people with um, different levels of machine learning background. So if you are not deeply into machine learning, then you may disprefer a paper that is, is highly technical. Um, th oh, so the three short exercises. So I am going to give an example of one of those exercises in a few slides. So thank you for that. I'll, I'll remember to, to look at, to bring that up. Um, but the, the, the important thing about the short exercises is they should be short. I mean, I, we're, we're talking like an hour or two commitment. That is, is my hope. If, it's, if, it, if one of these ends up taking you five or 10 hours, I've made a mistake and we should correct that. Um, uh, hey, Matt. Yeah, please. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on how we're gonna be like forming the groups or for what part of the course we're gonna be working with groups? And um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it will um, be kind of the, the second two thirds of the class. And I'm not sure how we're gonna do it yet. My, my guess is that I'll do something like asking people, well, first of all, who, who wants to work in a group instead of working alone? Um, and then things like, you know, do you want to do supervised learning or reinforcement learning? Are you interested with um, video or text or audio or EEG? Um, are you interested only in medical domains or do you only care about video games? So something like that. So it'll be some kind of self-matching process. So, but we'll, we'll figure out how to make, make that uh, work smoothly, especially since, again, there are people here from different departments and have different backgrounds. And I know there's a bunch of uh, students who just joined U of A, so they don't really know anyone. Um, boy, this is a weird time to join U of A. Side note, I have, I have never been to my office. Um, I've also, there's many of my students that I've never met in person. So that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, so what I'll try to figure out how to help you um, help form those teams. Oh, sorry, um, EEG, what does that stand for? Um, yes, oh, uh, yes, in Discord, there's the answer. I am not gonna try to pr pronounce that. That's why I'm gonna call it EEG. Um, okay, I already talked about email. There's the course email, there's Discord, E class, and Bear Tracks. Oh, so my understanding is that Bear Tracks is used to sign up for classes and then never used again. I'm not, I'm not really sure what Bear Tracks is, is useful for. I don't think we need that anymore. Um, but E class will be for submitting any, any assignments. Um, yeah, exactly, like Neuralink. Um, Recording, office hours, privacy. Oh yeah, so if, if, you, if you do not want your video or name to be recorded, please talk to me and we'll figure out how to make that work. Um, I don't want any, I, I know of people who would not want their, their face or voice to be recorded and put on the internet. So if you are in that position, please let me know and we will figure something out. Um, now I'd like to introduce Hogger and Nick. Um, so they are the two TAs for the class. Um, Hogger is a master's student um, who is working on off-policy reinforcement learning. And Nick is an undergraduate who's been uh, helping to lead this pro project on interactive machine learning that I'll talk about uh, in a little bit. So maybe Hogger, you could go first and just say, say a little bit about yourself. Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Hogar. Um, I'm a second year master's student. So apparently this is the second year. Uh, apparently we have a new semester starting. 
Um, I'm working on, uh, for my master thesis, I'm working on a, a policy uh, batch reinforcement learning. Uh, if you're interested uh, to know more about this or you want to chat about research at any point of time, just ping me. Uh, and yeah, I'll just, uh, yeah, I'm also working on uh, another project related to uh, a human, uh, human, uh, like human feedback uh, RL. So it's, uh, it's directly related. My, it's it's, more, it's way, may, way more related to interactive machine learning um and might be a, a bit related to the hippo gem that matt were, is going to introduce in a while um uh, i think that this is going to be an interesting class for me to to both learn from and ta uh, and yeah um nice to virtually meet you all thanks hogger nick do you want to say a bit about yourself and your experience this summer yeah, sure. So my name is Nick. Uh, I joined the uh, Interactive Robot Learning Laboratory or Intelligent Robot Learning Laboratory this summer uh, to work on a project that we dubbed uh, Hippo Gym. Uh, it's a framework for doing uh, human interaction over the web, so allowing you to gather data uh, quickly uh, and efficiently. Uh, I am here primarily to help with technical problems, I suppose, and uh, with those dev operations problems when you're trying to collect human data uh, I'm probably the one you're going to ask to, how am I going to do this quickly, easily, this doesn't work, that kind of thing, uh, and help troubleshoot that. Uh, my background before becoming an undergraduate was mostly emergency medicine and aviation. Um, so I have a, a breadth of experience outside of computing as well, uh, and I'm happy to talk about anything. Welcome all to the class. Yeah, and and emergency medical services are, are rescue, search and rescue are areas that people are actively working on AI human collaboration and figuring out what, what we can automate and uh, learn versus what needs to be controlled by a human. So if people, if people find that topic interesting, we might be able to um, leverage some of Nick's background to make things more realistic. Tons of real world experience there. And I shot down a bunch of commercial products when, uh, when I was working in that field. <laughs> And, and here's the Hippo Gym, a human input parsing platform for OpenAI, OpenAI Gym. So if you are interested in doing reinforcement learning, uh, we've, we've got this platform, which we're hoping to have a beta release in about a month that we can use in this class to very easily get human input into anything that's in OpenAI Gym. So OpenAI Gym is this general framework for doing reinforcement learning. So you can have Atari games, robot control, um, simple control problems like cart pole, all of that. Uh, oh, also, so I wanted to, to mention that we did, uh, we did Hippo Gym. Well, I shouldn't say did. We are hoping to release Hippo Gym soon. So this is an active area of research. Other research I do is um, on humans interacting with reinforcement learning. So later this semester, I'm hoping to have a, a startup called AI Redefined give, give a lecture. And their, their whole startup is based on humans interacting with machine learning agents. So I'm trying to come up with, a, uh, with some um, external speakers that are both in industry and academia so that you can get a sense of where this kind of stuff might be useful. Exactly. Um, so in Discord, uh, someone asked, can we collect human data from OpenAI Gym environment through Hippo? Oh, and Nick said yes. Uh, yeah, so it's, it should be an easy way of collecting human data. So in the past, I've done, a, I've done a bunch of projects with humans in the loop, and every student would need to spend uh, three, four months coming up with a good user interface. And then I had the bright idea, why am I making people do this over and over again? We should standardize. So I'm, I'm excited about providing this tool, but for people who are not doing reinforcement learning, I will also work with you to find other existing tools so that the, the more we can use, the more we can leverage, the less you have to build from scratch. Um, okay, so now I want to try something out. So, oh, let me look at these two questions really quick. Is there a way of including another human control agent? There may be a way of having multiple humans in, the, in, in, uh, in these gym environments, not sure yet. And in the class we're planning, I was planning on 
collecting, interacting with humans. So that could be collecting data from humans. If you wanted to use an existing data set that was collected from humans, that might be okay. But we can, we can figure that out. So what I would like you to do is go to poll EV, short for poll everywhere.com slash Matt Taylor. Note there are three T's and go there. And now what I'd like to do, so this is me learning Zoom. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is create some breakout rooms so that you can actually meet a few people in this class. So as you are in this breakout room, what I'm hoping you could do is talk about what, um, if you were doing school during the spring or the summer, what was either the best or worst thing you saw? And in this poll, in your group, you can figure out what was the best or worst thing. And then in this poll, you can enter something and people can upvote and downvote. So this is me trying to figure out Zoom rooms and poll everywhere at the same time. So can I move participants into rooms? I want to add a room. I want to, um, oh, here we go, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna give you uh, five minutes to meet uh, three or four other people and then put, put your best and worst into here and then we can see if we can upvote and downvote this.
Okay, so apparently when you go into a breakout room, your screen sharing stops. Good to know. Okay, so it looks like people were able to access this website. Um, so not meeting people, not chatting about research ideas. I totally agree with you. It is so nice to be able to just grab a beer or grab a coffee with someone, and it's much harder to do. But hopefully, um, as we form groups of people with similar interests, you'll have some of these me meetings uh, synergistically. Um, I think it, it is a good idea to try to set aside some time for, for just hanging out with friends, but also hanging out with research colleagues. I agree, being able to watch the lectures, conferences are nice. I, I am actually broadcasting from my basement, so my cats will not be showing up on screen unless something goes wrong. Um, so one, one of the failure modes I heard is that people could, uh, the professor would say, okay, go into the breakout rooms and talk for 10 minutes and then come back. So everyone would go into the breakout rooms and then just go get some food and come back nine minutes later. So I, hopefully we can avoid that. Um, also, I, I saw a few instances where people forgot to mute and were using the restroom. That was, that was kind of fun. Um, okay, so let's go on to the next thing. Okay, now what I tried to do is if you go back to that poll ev.com slash Matt Taylor, hopefully there is a new poll. So if someone could, oh, it's working. Awesome. So if you could go, I would just like to get a sense of what kind of background people have. And my guess is that we do have a wide range from people who are machine learning experts to people who are learning how to use machine learning. These were kind of arbitrary categories. I apologize in advance if you don't fit into one or more of these because I, I didn't come up with a good label for you. So during, during lectures, I'm hoping that we can use the Discord and, and you'll see the cat one day. Um, uh, hopefully through Discord and poll, every, poll everywhere, we can keep the lectures more interactive. Um, but hopefully we will also have people start uh, breaking in and asking questions audibly. So I'll figure out how to, how to encourage that more. But it looks like we do have a range. So while we go over, while we are in this class for this semester, if you are a machine learning expert and I'm not going into enough depth or I am not giving you enough technical content, please let me know. If you're on the other end and do not have a machine, uh, as much machine learning background and you feel like you're getting lost and I am going too deep, let me know that as well. I will probably not be able to perfectly satisfy everyone every class, but I hope that I provide good value for, for everyone who is taking this. Okay, so moving on. Um, okay, so I mentioned there'll be a bunch of guest lectures. There will be reading. Um, it, again, it should be co completely manageable. I'll be clear about when it is. Oh, um, so Hippo Jim. I mentioned there, there would be a RL project, or a short RL project that you could do. So one of those projects I was thinking of would be to download Hippo Gym and um, we would uh, tell you where to, where to insert some code so that you could create a learning agent that could learn from a person. And then you would run Hippo Gym to teach an agent to play Mario or Pac-Man. So that's that for these exercises. That's the kind of thing they will be. Um, so in that in that case, it could just be you know kind of cookie cutter, or we could say you know if, if for a stretch goal, if you'd like, pick one of these algorithms. Here are the papers and tweak the implementation so you could use it. So if you want to get into the the ML details, you can absolutely do that. But try to learn something about ML, about a platform, and get experience interacting with a machine. So I'm going to point out that if you have never seen this teachable machine with Google, it's pretty cool. So 
um, I'm not requiring that you that you look at this, but I and I, I'm not going to give a demo because trying to demo this while I'm using my camera and microphone wouldn't work. But the idea is that you can, in basically in real time, use um, pictures or your camera or your microphone to teach things like teach the difference between me and dog, metal or metal music or not metal. Do I have, do I look like I have wings or do I look like a tree? So I would encourage you before Thursday to check out teachable machine with google.com. And now that I say that out loud, I could actually put that in the discord chat. Uh, right. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I had a slide of just talking about the projects. It could be reinforcement learning, could be supervised, it could be unsupervised. My ideal project would be something that will benefit your research personally. So if, if we come up with this cool idea and it goes into a paper, awesome. If, if we can do some project related to humans and machine learning that you could use in your research after this class going forward, that would be ideal. So that way, this is directly helping your research. If, if you don't have a, a, a thesis topic yet, and this is just something you're doing for fun because you had to take a class and this course looked interesting, that's totally fine too. But if, if this was beneficial to you longer term, that would be the best, both because it'll be useful for you and because it'll, it'll help, um, help you pick something that you're excited about. And these groups, like I said, can be different sizes. If you're in a 10 person group, you better, you better have an amazing project because um, the expectations scale with the number of people. Um, so I was wondering now if, if anyone, based on this kind of rambling I've been doing, does anyone have any ideas about the kind of project they might want to do because they've they've already been thinking about this in other research. Would anyone does does anyone have any ideas off the top of their head? Uh, so hi, David here. Um, so just initial project idea. Um, I guess if anyone's ever uh, heard of like Kenneth Stanley, the guy that does all like the novelty search kind of stuff and like evolutionary algorithms kind of stuff. Um, he, he, he's current, he has this big spiel about like open-endedness um, in like machine learning and just AI in general. And I guess the idea that I had was um, playing with a, an RL agent in, or whatever agent in order to, I don't know, maybe better, uh, in order for it to learn a better model of the environment or for it to do some other task later on. But that was just an initial idea I wanted to throw out there. Thanks. Yeah, nice. I think I think there are a few people who are talking about medical related stuff. Yeah, I think it's also interesting the stuff related with uh how to use an agent or some some robot or some computer to best teach a, like a human being <laughs> as opposed to the inconsistencies of real teachers you get. Ouch. So okay. Uh, I'll just <laughs> step back and let you program me. That's fine. Um, and yeah, and that's, and that's uh, what uh, intelligent tutoring systems are trying to do. They've got a long way to go. But if if we are going to educate people at scale, you need to figure out how to scale up the limited number of teachers so that you can have personalized experiences for more people. And you've absolutely got to think about the human there and you're going to have to customize and learn about the human. Hi, uh, Laura. I'd be interested in working with uh, EMG or EEG data in order to control robotic arms and grippers. Awesome. Um, and so a number, a number of years ago, I worked on a project that was using eye gaze to control a wheelchair. 
Mm. So I, I've stayed away from brain stuff because it's scary. Um, it just such a noisy signal, but there are so many awesome things that so much um, uh, assistive technology we could have if we were able to do that reliably and um, cost effectively. Hey. Any other? Hey, Scott. Yeah, so Samuel. Samuel here. Um, I worked on a, a project over the summer of you're basically doing semantic segmentation of diffusion MRI images of the brain. And the guys that we were working with noticed, you know, some ways that the, our, our model was making mistakes uh, based on whatever other stuff that they, they knew. And I'm just wondering if maybe it would be possible to have, you know, these um, biomedicine people interacting with this segmentation network kind of showing how, like why, I guess, why certain things are, are segmented a certain way based on whatever age and other stuff. Absolutely. That's, that's very cool. Sean here. Hi. Uh, I uh, have some ideas about uh, dynamic treatment region. Uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, people uh, measure their physical body, uh, uh, physical uh, identifications for a doctor to make any treatment plans uh, day by day or month by month. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I've, I have no idea how easy that would be, but it sounds like if it worked, it could be pretty impactful. Yeah, I uh, look at some papers that uh, they use Q learning, a reinforcement learning on that. Yeah, but yeah, but we can find a way to use maybe interactive uh, HCI or something with it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Hi, uh, my project is focusing on dementia and Alzheimer and older adults. So I really like to use machine learning to measure the engagement of people and then or using some games or making some games that engage people more to reduce the dementia on, on, on older ages. Cool, I've seen, I've seen work on using um, games to try to measure or predict Alzheimer's and dementia progression, but trying to figure out how attentive or it, whether people are paying attention sounds difficult but interesting. <laughs> I'm interested in medical diagnostics uh, and especially in uh, the interaction of uh, healthcare providers with an AI algorithm in order to improve its usability and uh, trustworthiness. Nice. Uh, random, random comment. Um, I, for two years between undergrad and grad school, I worked at a, a healthcare software company. And one of the big things was getting, getting providers and clinicians to not only understand the system, but trust it. Uh, they, you, you got, this was around 2001. And some doctors did not know how to use a mouse. And they only trusted their handwritten notes. Or they wanted a person to annotate uh, or, or uh, type it up for them and getting, hopefully that's changed a bit. Um, I'm interested in uh, intelligent tutor systems as well, specifically around language learning. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there is a ton in education that can be done in terms of like the interaction between um, like human and AI, in, especially in terms of like um, you know, obviously you get taught by the AI for the education part, but also um, some form of having like uh, the human training it as well as a form of like personalization. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sharing their, your initial thoughts. I think this helps not only um, show that there's a wide range of things that people are interested in, but I think also shows that there'll be a bunch of things that different people will find exciting. Um, so my, my goal is really to, to make this class fun and interesting, but also useful. 
So do as we, as we go forward, think about how, how I can best do that. So what I'm gonna suggest now is I'm going to stop recording. Oh, look at that. There we go, stop recording.